Welcome to CSL TV, and I just hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is just a review, a reaction, as well as an informational channel, and you know, hopefully, the informational part help you and someone out. And we pretty much just be watching videos and talk about them. Now, if you know something about what we watch, go ahead and enlighten us with a little bit of details about it, because I don't know everything. You know what I'm saying? And we can't be everywhere at all time. And you know, right now it's like 1 a.m. Midwest time, whatever you want to call it, Eastern time, you know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, no negativity and none of that should be on anybody's mind because my day started at 7 a.m. And it's about to get to end in about an hour, but I want to see what's going on in today's world. So, with that being said, I hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. Let's get it. Oh, subscribe, like, comment, it's free. You're helping me out by doing a good deed. Thank you so much. This video out of Florida is wild. It all went down about a half hour north of Fort Myers, where police were called to carry out a wellness check on a 55-year-old woman. When cops get on the scene, they speak to some neighbors before returning to the woman's property. There, they search around and make some phone calls before the woman's 6 year old son comes out of a door. Well, I was sleeping a I'm glad you woke up because you're about to come inside. We're looking for mom. Do you have you seen her? She's not around right now. Do you know where she's, she's at? Her sister's asking for her. She's not in any trouble or anything like that. I have no idea. When was the last time you saw her? The son tells the cops he hasn't seen her for a few days, and after some questioning, the cops ask to go inside the house. Can it be alright if we went inside to make sure she's not in there? Huh? I can't tell you that. The son sips his beverage as a cop explains why they want to look around. So to make sure her mom's not stowed away in a closet or something, dad didn't come back and retaliate for getting arrested or something like that. If you're not going to tell me yes or no, then we're just going to peek her head in there real quick and then we'll come back outside. You can lead the way if you're so pleased. The guy goes to open the door and immediately claims it's locked. Do you have a key? No. Why would you lock the door behind you? I just usually do that. So how do you get in? From here, the cops start to get frustrated. So how do you get in the house and I just lock the door? Because I feel like you're fucking with me. What the hell? What's the deal? Do you understand how... How this looks, right? Yes, sir. So why? So how do you get in the house since you locked the door? I'm probably asleep. Soon after, the man leads cops to a different entrance and tries to open a busted door. Cop instructs him on how to remove the door, and a moment later, an officer goes inside, who immediately returns to question the son. So you're gonna tell me you didn't know mom was in there? No. Because I got a whole bigger issue. The cop immediately puts the son in cuffs because it turns out she's dead and her body was decomposing inside. So you saw her in the position that she's currently in now? Yes, sir. So why did you tell us that mom wasn't there? I smoked her before you ever even came outside and you're telling me mom's not in there and you know damn well that she was in there. Yes, sir. And you're lying to me. So why wouldn't you just tell us the truth? We told you from the beginning we weren't there for you. We just wanted to make sure mom and mom was good. Yeah. That's all. So what prompted you to lie to us? When you went in there and checked on her two days ago, did you know that she was deceased? While it's unclear what exactly led up to this incident, one thing is clear. The United States is experiencing a mental health crisis. According to a recent poll by CNN, 80% of Americans said the single biggest barrier to them getting treatment is cost. The second biggest barrier was health insurance companies not covering mental health care at all. And the third was not finding a mental health care provider in network. The son was arrested and charged with failing to report a death to a medical examiner, as well as resisting an officer without arrest. The circumstances that led to the mother's death are currently unknown. Now that's crazy. How in the hell can you be inside of the house with a decomposing body? The officer said he could barely walk in. Y'all see how quick he walked out. And then you just up in there chilling, your mom up there rotting away. That's just fucking disgusting and disturbing. And I don't understand what is going on. And when they say mental health, this is beyond mental health. This is some shit that's like on a whole nother type level. You just sitting there smelling that body decomposing just like it's a normal thing. 
The man who was trapped in his wrecked car for six days is now sharing what it was like. I could hear sirens and I could hear, you know, I could hear voices out in the distance and I would yell and, and nothing. Back in December, Matt Ream was driving to a funeral when he swerved to avoid hitting a deer and crashed through a guardrail and down an embankment. And, you know, after that, it was all downhill. His truck was so mangled he couldn't get out and his phone was just out of his reach. I can't feel the lower part of my leg. There's something wrong. I couldn't eat anything. Water and stuff from the road above me would wash down and land right in my sunroof. And I would take my sweatpants to where it would collect that water and then I would basically suck the water out of my sweatpants. Fortunately, that was enough to sustain him until these men stumbled on the hidden car crash. I didn't know if he was alive or not because he was out at that moment. It took rescuers hours to free Matt from his car and he had to be airlifted to a hospital and have part of his leg amputated. But he's on the road to recovery. So Matt, before the accident, suffered with anxiety, depression. So my mission going forward, uh, I want to make people happier. And he's even formed a new bond with the men who found him stuck under that bridge. It changed my life meeting Matt. He's like my son now. It's always amazing to see him. Now, I feel bad just for the simple fact he will never be the same again because he done the right thing by trying not to harm a living animal. But at the same time, you know, he was out there for a week with nothing, you know, no nothing. Like couldn't get to anything. And luckily, you know, those beautiful folks came through when they came through because who would have known his uh, his turnabout, you know, how this would have all played and turned around for him. And you do go through stuff when you go through shit like this. Just for the simple fact, I myself have been through a very bad car accident. And it's not easy getting behind the wheel or even being on the passenger seat of a vehicle. Let alone learning how to physically do things and all this, that, and, and walking. You know, it's, it's difficult, but I'm just happy that somebody was able to come across his path and save him because somebody somewhere loved him. And look at the smile on his face when he got reunited with my man.